Hello everyone, Jerry D'Ambrosio here with VectorVest and today I wanted to talk about how to navigate through difficult or extremely high times of market volatility like we're seeing recently, right? The S&P 500 VIX had been above 30, it did just recently dip back uh, below 30 but uh, still at historically high levels. So uh, what we have to do, particularly as traders, is pay very close attention to market volatility to help us set the proper stop loss and also size our positions correctly. So, so we're going to talk today about an indicator called Average True Range or ATR. Uh, if you want to Google Average True Range, you can do that just to uh, get an idea of the calculation, the formula behind it. I'm just going to pay more attention to the application of it. How do we use the indicator? So the industry standard look back period for ATR is a 14 day ATR. Uh, I've seen folks use a 20 day ATR. In fact, Chuck LeBeau uh, has made a career out of creating uh, exit strategies, created one called the chandelier stop. It's actually a 22 day ATR with a multiple of three. So uh, essentially what you do, we're going to use a 14 day ATR today, um, but it is a flexible indicator. You can shorten the look back period, you can lengthen the look back period, just depending on your own level or tolerance for risk. Um, it can be used as a way to exit a trade. And the most common applications are two times or three times ATR. So you take the ATR for the day, the average two range for the day, and you multiply it by either two or three. And it doesn't matter how the entry was made. For example, you can enter into a position off of a support retracement or a moving average crossover or a continuation chart pattern breakout. Doesn't matter how you enter the trade, you can use ATR, which again is a measure of market volatility to set the proper stop loss and also how to uh, correctly size your position here. Okay, so here we're looking at Kellogg. Uh, hard right edge is May 5th, just about a week or two ago. Uh, price up at the top and the ATR, the average true range down at the bottom. So on that day, let's say you like this trade. You like the breakout, actually just recently broke out here on May 5th uh, from a nice bull flag pattern. Nice run up, stock price made a new high, a little mini consolidation, nice breakout there on May 5th. So you like the setup, uh, but you just want to pay close attention to market volatility and more particularly the volatility of the stock because as you can see with the ATR down at the bottom, volatility is increasing. So we want to be careful where we set our stop loss and also how many shares we buy. We don't want to risk too much on this trade. Now we're going to go into the few examples that I'm going to show you here. Assuming we have a $50,000 portfolio and I don't know if you've heard of the 1% rule. We don't want to risk any more than 1% of that. That's the overall portfolio value on any one trade. So if What's 1% of 50000 It's $500. I don't want to risk any more than $500 in this trade. Now, that's not to say I'm going to put $500 into the trade. I'm not going to risk or lose any more than that, any more than 1% of the overall portfolio value. So let's say our cost basis is $70.23. The average true range on that day was $1.51. Okay. 3 ATR, we take that $1.51, we multiply it times 3, and that gives us an initial risk of $4.53 per share. Not going to risk any more than $4.53 per share. Now, where does that leave us percentage-wise? It leaves us at about a 6.5% loss. Well, that's actually a little bit more than what we're willing to lose on a $10,000 investment, right? So again, five positions. I want to try to put ten grand into each position. But I don't want to risk any more than $500 or 5% on any one trade. Well, this particular setup here, which we like, remember, a nice breakout. Uh, stock price made a new high on May 5th. We like the setup. And based on the volatility, the current volatility of the stock, 3 ATR, which again is just common practice, would result in a 6.5% loss or $645. That's a little bit more than what we were willing to risk, right? So how do we overcome that? Well, instead of putting $10,000 into the position, by the way, $4.53 risk leaves us with a stop price of $65.70. Now, does that make sense 
for this setup? I think it does. I think it makes perfect sense. You're trading the breakout and you're setting your initial risk right below the swing low. It makes absolutely perfect sense to put the stop loss there. ATR is doing its job here. But again, that would result in a 6.5% loss. I'm not willing to take on a 6.5% loss, so I just put more money into the trade. Easy calculation. You take your risk, which is $500. You divide it by your percentage loss, your max percent loss, which is about 6.5%. And that comes out to a $7,752 investment. I can still take the trade. I'm accounting for volatility, which is increasing. I don't want to risk more than 5% uh, on the trade. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to risk any more than $500 on the trade. And I know with this particular setup, I'm looking at about a 6.5% max loss. So I can take the trade. I just, could put, I just can't put 10 grand into it. I could put $7,752 into the trade. Let's take a look at another example. Campbell's uh, Campbell Soup, hard right edge, May 5th uh, as well. So on that day, also like the setup, you got a nice rising channel there. Stock price makes a new high. I like the setup, but I can see that volatility is increasing. That ATR indicator is, uh, you know, moving higher exponent exponentially as we get to the hard right edge. So forty-eight dollars and sixty-two cents again. Just, let's just assume that's our cost basis. One average to range on that day was a dollar eleven. Three ATR is $3.33. That would result in almost a 7% loss. That's a little bit more than what I'm willing to lose. Now, where does that put our stop loss? And you always have to ask the question, does it make sense? Does 3 uh, ATR uh, make sense for this particular stock? I think it also makes perfect sense here as well because you're putting it right below those long lower wicks there, right below the, the more recent uh, low prices there at 45.29. I think it makes perfect sense to put your stop loss there. However, I can't put 10 grand into the position because that would result in a $685 loss. That's a little bit too much. So I take my initial risk, which was $500, divided by 6.85%. That gives me an initial investment of $7,299. So in times of high market volatility, like we're seeing now, it makes sense to reduce your exposure. You're not reducing your risk. The risk stays the same. The risk is always going to be that 1% of your overall portfolio value. Now, do the numbers or do the math if you're working with more money. If it's $100,000, it's $1,000. 1% of that is $1,000. $50,000 portfolio, I don't want to risk any more than $500 on each trade. I'd like to put 10 grand into each trade, but in times of high mar market volatility like we're seeing now, uh, it's just prudent to reduce your position size, reduce your exposure, okay? Now, when the time comes again where volatility starts to drop and we get into some more comfortable, uh, less volatile market environments like we saw back in June of 2021, here's Dollar General, Den uh, Dollar General excuse me. I like the setup. Stock price, the trend has reversed. Stock price is moving higher. Uh, here at VectorVest, we gave the stock a buy rating. And our relative timing indicator, uh, which is on a zero to two scale, where above one is good, below one is bad, had just recently crossed above one here on June 21st of 2021. So a nice emerging trend here. We like the setup. Let's say our cost basis is two thirteen ninety seven. One ATR on that day was $2.90. Five cents. Three ATR is eight dollars and eighty-five cents. Well, on a two hundred and thirteen dollar, roughly two hundred fourteen dollar cost basis, that would only result in about a four percent loss. Okay, where does that put our stop? Eight dollars and eighty-five cents below our purchase price puts it at two dollar two hundred five dollars and twelve cents. Does that make sense? I know some of you might be saying, "Well, no," because I'd rather put it right below the swing low. And that's okay. You could lower your stop, and that's going to open you up to uh, to more risk, which again will have to you'll have to then adjust your position size. But I like it right there. Uh, I don't know if you guys see this. It's a little mini inverse head and shoulders pattern. There's your left shoulder. There's your head. There's your right shoulder. There's a level of what was resistance 
stock price broke above that resistance level, that resistance level becomes support. I'm putting my stop right below support completely makes sense. Okay. Again, that would only result in a $413 loss on a $10,000 investment. That's less than 1% of our overall portfolio value. But how can you maximize returns and not take on any more risk? Well, you can leverage up. Put a little bit more money into the trade. $500, which is my initial, initial risk, divided by 4.13% allows me or, or uh, produces a $12,106 investment. I'm not risking any more money. I am leveraging up in a less volatile environment. Everybody with me there? Okay, so, that, so when you are right, okay, when you are correct on direction and, and you become profitable, you leveraged up and you maximize your returns. Again, not risking any more than you would on any other position. So what does ATR become after we're profitable? Well, it becomes a trailing stop. It's used initially to set the proper stop loss. Again, three ATR is, a, is just a, a common application of it. It helps us set the proper stop loss, and it helps us size our position correctly based on that max pain percentage loss. So then once we become profitable, it becomes a trailing stop. So as the stock price rises, 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 that trail changes or that three ATR changes, right? Because ATR is a moving average. And as you can see, as price continues to rise there, volatility stays low. Stock price hits a new high from when we purchased the stock at $239.35. One ATR on that day was $2.88, which gives us a trail of $8.64. Now, it's not a percentage trail like we're used to. It's not a 10% trail or a 7% trail. It's a dollar trail. It's recalculating the ATR uh, every day, continuing to multiply it by three every day. And if the stock price falls, three ATR below the highest price achieved since you purchased the stock, it will exit you out. So on uh, August 11, 2021, the stock price hit a high of $239.35. Three ATR on that day was $864. That gives us a stop of $230.71. That red line there, we got stopped out uh, on that day right there before you know, the true change of direction there. We were able to lock in some really nice gains. So folks, ATR, just a great way to account for volatility, no matter what the volatility in the market is. You know, times of low volatility, you're able to leverage your money a little bit better, uh, but at the same time, not risking anymore. But times of high volatility, like we've seen recently, you want to reduce your exposure, reduce your position size, make sure you're following that 1% rule. Don't risk any more than 1% of your overall portfolio value on any one position. Uh, that'll help you minimize losses. That'll ensure your survival uh, in this game that we play. So uh, don't forget to uh, like, comment, share the video, and click the link below for more information. Thank you, folks. Have a great day.